Hey everyone, welcome back. The new war has dropped and Caliban is finally here. If you haven't checked him out yet, this is what we're gonna cover today. His blueprints can be attained from, I believe, the market? And his parts can come from the NPC in Alternate Cetus, which you will be able to unlock once you finish the new war for new bounties. Now, this is not a spoiler. As DE stated, there will be a new version of the planes and Cetus themselves. We're also not going to include any lore or quest spoilers here, so don't be worried. You can watch this video even if you haven't done the new war yet. So, what is Caliban, and what can he do? Well, he is a sentient Warframe hybrid smashed together as an abomination, if you will. This is true to the Tempest play from Shakespeare, where his namesake is half human, half monster. As the titular character featured here, what role do you think he will play in the new war? Well, you're gonna have to play the quest to find out. Today, we're looking at his kit and what synergies we can pull together, so let's hop right in. Let's start with his abilities. He has Razor Gyre, Sentient Wrath, Lethal Progeny, and Fusion Strike. Sentient's Wrath, his 2 is also his Helminth ability. He smashes the ground and pulses out a wave. It's kind of like Rhino Stomp in effect, but gives lifted status instead of Frozen Ragdoll. This is one of only two abilities in the game right now that can give enemies the lifted status. The other is Savagoth's Shadow's Embrace. There is a cool interaction for this we'll get into later. The pulse expands over time, but does not scale with duration like Pillage. It does a sizable amount of impact damage, but it's impact damage. Unless the enemies are stripped by his or it's really just a quick CC, you won't really be killing much enemies with it. However, its other utility lies in the damage vulnerability stat. This is similar to Sevagoth's Reap, but the scaling's slightly weaker at only 35% base instead of 50%. The suspended state lasts for the entire ability duration. If you hit ragdolled enemies, notice I said ragdoll, not lifted. It can push them around or even make them leave the lifted stat. I don't really understand how it works. It's a little bit buggy. Lifted is both a status and causes ragdoll. But if you hit them like that with your one using your left mouse button, it will do more damage and launch yourself up into the sky. Honestly, the damage from your one though is negligible and barely seems able to kill even on normal star chart without your two also. Razor Gyre essentially turns you into a Beyblade, similar to Inaros' Sandstorm. However, it doesn't even have scaling, and while it can proc Slash, it barely does and the overall damage is quite low. The ability drain is fairly high and you only get a small bonus heal for your first ability slot. In my eyes, this is the one to subsume off. Yes, we're going to be looking at Helmet setups today because it really complements his kit well and makes up for his near useless one. He can spam mouse one to move between nearby enemies similar to Excalibur's slash dash, but again, damage underwhelming. His 3 is Lethal Progeny. You probably saw this one from the dev stream. It spawns up to 3 Conculists to fight for you. Their main attacks are either swing their baseball bat arms or spin like a top. The swing actually does decent damage, but unfortunately, the top is abysmal. They also seem to have insanely bad AI and will turn around to hit single enemies nearby even if you ball enemies up in front of them. Their big draw though is actually the shield regeneration capability. So while Caliban's description on the new war page said they can regenerate his shields after a period out of combat, this is not exactly true. Well, not in the conventional sense. So Baruch becomes passive and gains dodge again from Elude if he doesn't attack for 0.2 seconds. Caliban on the other hand doesn't have any mechanic like this actually in his kit whatsoever. Basically, the Conculus will give shield regen per second but only if you still have shields remaining. Therefore, it cannot bypass regeneration delay by itself when your shields are broken. However, shields recovered through any means, most commonly Augur mods or Brief Respite, will instantly reactivate the shield regeneration buff from your Conculists. Each Conculus also gives you the listed shield regen per second, so spawning all three will regenerate your shields three times as fast. This allows for interesting build setups as well. Finally, these Conculus will always be in range of you. Whenever they might go out of range, they instantly TP over to you, thus guaranteeing you will always have the bonus shield regen so long as they are present. They also pull aggro away from you, as enemies will focus on them instead if they are nearby. His 4, Fusion Strike, is the cream of the crop. In my eyes, this is his big saving grace and one of the best 4s in the game. But it is currently bugged, yet it is still extremely good. This ability description states it strips both armor and shields, but currently it only strips armor. I don't know if this is a typo or it's actually supposed to be a defense strip, but they forgot. Regardless, this ability is extremely good. It's Zaku's Gaze on steroids. It still requires 200% strength to reach 100% armor strip, but unlike Gaze, does not require an enemy to set up. You can just fusion strike the floor to create a fallout zone. 
and it has base 8 meter radius so the fallout area can get pretty large. Any enemies that enter the area will have their armor permanently stripped by the listed amount. It cannot be nullified and remains even after the ability expires. It applies on both Demolis and Acolytes as well, meaning Caliban will become a solid pick for disruption or survival on Steel Path. Let's look at the build I settled on. I subsumed Razor Gyre off for air bursts on the setup. Like I said, Razor Gyre is effectively useless and offers nothing to your kit. Why air burst? Grouping helmets work really well on Caliban to aggressively pull enemies into your armor strip area while also piling them together for easy killing. I feel this is the easiest way to get the most out of this kit, as Caliban does not have a way to effectively DPS on Steel Path with solid kills per second. None of his abilities are really strong enough to kill enemies reliably, armored or not. Therefore, his survivability is reliant on the firepower of your weaponry, which you will support with this kit that appears to focus more on CC and buff or debuff support. The strip is extremely strong though, so grouping utility was really all his kit was missing. I didn't pick Larva on this particular setup because on a higher duration build, your Larva will not refresh before its end unless you kill all the enemies pulled in, and with a sizable amount of range, it's very likely some enemies will get stuck on walls further away and prevent you from ending Larva just by shooting into the ball. Therefore, I opted for Air Burst instead, which has no recast conditions like this. We didn't pick Ensnare either because the entire point is to pull enemies to an area they aren't at inside of your armor strip zone. This means you can stand near the edge of the zone to pull enemies to you, nearly doubling your aggression radius. This means range is extremely important on the build, so we opted for overextended with stretch for that sweet 235 range. This gives us 18.8 meters radius on air bursts, which I'd say is just enough to be comfortable. Your fusion strike has a fallout radius of 18.8 meters as well. Unfortunately, this makes reaching that 200 strength benchmark for a full strip difficult. We managed to achieve this by slotting growing power alongside a rank 8 blind rage and max transient fortitude. As Caliban is a frequent caster, I want to improve the energy economy and thus script by with the minimum rank 8 blind rage for 176 strength before growing power and getting back up to 55 efficiency. This is still problematic though because of active cast, so I stacked both Equilibrium and Prime Flow with Arcane Energize. We're throwing a Panzer on top of this to score more energy from the Viral Quill Synth Deconstruct Synergy. If you're still worried about the energy, I would recommend dropping Overextended for Augur Reach. Then you can drop Blind Rage for Umbral Intensify, and then you can use a rank 6 Transient Fortitude instead of Max Rank. Strength will still be at 179 before growing power, and efficiency will be up from 55 to a neutral 100. You also gain 10 more duration to 138, but your range is cut down to 175, so it's a little bit iffy. I don't know. Feel free to try it out. The other arcane can be acceleration or whatever you feel can support the build. Magus Anomaly can also help a bit with the pull to make up for the lost range, since Anomaly actually pulls out to 30 meters. Now about his 3. His 3 makes it so you don't have to regenerate all your shields with brief respite or auger sets in one cast. Or even 2. The 3 seconds iframes from rolling guard on the build is more than enough for your shields to regenerate due to the conculists. So long as you cast an ability to immediately regain at least 1 point of shield. This means neutral or even positive efficiency Caliban builds aren't any less capable at shield gating. Weapons today? Any AoE weapon will work, however AoE hitscan will work even better. This is because we're using Air Burst. We're picking Ambassador because it can be built for 100% status and pure electric. This is the build I use on it, basically just your raw crit stats and electric and maximizing electric weight since it does scale off elements. Now why did I choose Ambassador? Because ragdoll group tactics like Larva or say Air Burst are favorable to hitscan AoE, whereas non-ragdoll group tactics such as Ensnare are favorable to projectile AoE. It just has something to do with the physics coding for the hitboxes. We're using Air Burst today that causes ragdoll, hence hitscan AoE from Ambassador. We get extra hits against our enemies this way for way more electric dots. Prime Fast Hands is stacked with Merciless because the reload on this weapon is kinda slow, and we can already one-shot enemies when stacks are up. Hunchy Munitions is also there to get your initial stacks up faster when facing less enemies. To reach 100% status, we slotted Galvanize Aptitude, which does work on this weapon, and Hammer Shot, which lets us also stack more base damage and crit damage at the same time. The primed Bane multiplies all the electric dots we will get from the Allfire by 2.4 times. Vigilante Supplies is the last piece to make up for the high ammo drain of spamming the Allfire. You'll notice we don't have Fire Rate on the build, it's because we didn't fit it and the reason we sourced it from Arcane Acceleration instead so that we could reach 100% status. To make this work, you literally just hit an enemy at some points to proc growing power. 
cast your four wherever you want, it doesn't really matter. Because it yeets enemies in the initial area with a fallout explosion. That yeeting, by the way, I really, really dislike and I wish DE didn't do it. Anyways, air bursts to drag enemies back in for the pile and unload the ambassador shot while they're still grounded. You'll get multiple hits per enemy and chain procs on everything, resulting in instant death. Oh, and stagger casting your conculists for shield gating. If you spawn them all at once, you won't be able to cast more if your shields break, and you'll also lose all your conculists at the same time. If you recall, this is actually pretty similar to a Zaku Gay setup, while running a high range air burst or ensnare as is subsume. So how about we look at another interaction? You might find this one interesting. When we were playing with Caliban on stream yesterday, one of my viewers, Suter1111, suggested me to try out the Saxum set mods. If you don't know what these do, they kind of work like Sobek's Acid Shell mod, Detron's Thermagnetic Shell, Jadkatag's Vulcan Blitz, basically AoE percent HP damage. Unfortunately, these damage instances are always affected by armor, so it honestly wouldn't do anything unless we armor strip. Luckily, Caliban's is able to full strip and it sticks around while also being a permanent strip. So Saxomods would be a perfect fit here. They do also have a second requirement though of enemies being lifted for it to proc, but remember how I said only two abilities in the game can do this? Sentient Wrath is one of them. This is actually really interesting because Sentient Wrath is a subsume, meaning there might be other frames that can take advantage of this synergy better. But today, we're looking at Caliban. We want to fit all three Saxon mods on our loadout to max out the set bonus for 30% HP damage in a 12 meter radius. Unfortunately, the set bonus always has a 6 second cooldown once it triggers. Now, this interaction isn't working as well as it should because this 4 currently only strips armor, instead of both armor and shields, like the ability says. So for now, you can only do this really against Grenier. But basically, you can use this on any setup that can apply a decent amount of AoE viral and a DPS single target weapon. For simplicity, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use this Cedo build for the first showcase, so that I can primer and DPS on the same weapon. And then I will showcase it with a viral DPS epitaph that can prime and kill. These weapons have mostly single target DPS, and the purpose is to show how it can translate into AoE through the Saxum set bonus proccing percent HP damage that scales off both of the damage vulnerability effects created by Sentient Wrath when you lift enemies, and the viral stacks you apply with weapons. Again, I wouldn't advise using this except in Grenier missions at the moment, or at least until DE fixes it to be a defense strip and not an armor strip. Feel free to fiddle around with this and see what other weapons can work with it, too. A Zenistar Viral Primer chilling around your Fusion Strike area would also be efficient for AoE Viral procs. So you essentially strip enemies, pull them in with Anomaly, and ball them up with Larva. You cast your two and prime the enemies at the same time with whatever you have on hand and shoot into the ball. Larva turns all damage into headshot damage, so you should easily be able to kill an enemy since they are full stripped. As soon as one dies, this will trigger the Saxum Explosion and kill everything else. I took Larva because we don't want them to get yeeted by your two or other abilities when priming or setting up which would be the case with Air Burst as Sentient Wrath does ragdoll them while in lifted status. Larva is also faster than Air Burst for this purpose on an already long rotation and we can skip the augment because the lower range ensures that only immediate nearby enemies get pulled in. Killing all enemies inside a larva will reset it also. While this is clunkier than the first build I show you, it allows some really weird and interesting build setups like that Epitaph Primer DPS. And you could even use a dedicated Epitaph Primer but actually DPS a larva ball with a sniper for maximum DPS, maybe for example in a level cap scenario. I don't know. But it opens up potential for more interesting synergies and interactions, both on Caliban and other frames if you subsume it in the future. Other helmets that might be handy on Caliban? Dispensary lets you run higher range and tank efficiency without having to worry about energy at all and still full strip, as he is quite energy intensive like you've seen. Some of you may think Thermal Sunder, but don't do it. It takes about 3 casts to kill and is incredibly energy expensive to use, even worse than anything I've shown you so far in this video. So what are my final thoughts on Caliban? He has potential, he's looking decent, he could be much better though. His 4 is insane for its utility, but unfortunately has a pretty long cast time and is a bit annoying to use. But all of the other abilities are fast cast, so that's why I chose not to slot natural talent on him. But also, his 4 is bugged like I said and isn't defense stripping all the shields off. This would help with Demless, as Caliban seems to be a viable pick for that as the strip is permanent and they can't resist or nullify it. But it would also in particular help the Saxon build as the percent HP damage only scales off health and doesn't include shield so it struggles to kill corpus and corrupted units currently. Grenier is all fine though. His 3 needs better Conculus AI. It turned out to be a glorified shield bot and an actually really, really good one. But I'm pretty sure this is the worst AI I've ever seen on an ally unit for the type of attacks it can use. 
They at least can also de-aggro for you though. His 2 is really nice. It's not amazing, but I would call it a useful niche ability. Unfortunately, I think he will suffer from the same case as Sevagoth, where it's better on other frames than himself, but damage, vulnerability, and CC is always useful. If you slap Sentient Wrath on, say, hmm, a Vobin Vortex build, you can only imagine the damage output from Saxum set. His 1 is entirely useless. Either buff the damage on it massively, as well as the rate of slash ticks, and remove the massive pogo stick when you press mouse 1 on an enemy affected by your 2, and decrease the active drain cost. It literally only serves as a subsume slot at the moment. He actually is decent, but his base kit is lacking with an obvious subsume slot. I strongly would recommend picking something else for that, as it would make him feel a lot more complete. What do you guys think? If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible, like what we are doing now on the new war updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I got a bunch more new war videos to pump out and show you guys. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.